Learn how to paint a galaxy or winter night sky with Daniel Smith watercolor. Plus, learn how to give a watercolor look to your dye stamped images. There's a $50 gift card up for grabs, so use the blog hop link in the description below. And while you're there, be sure to like and subscribe this video. This is the Tonic Studios Shoot for the Moon stamp set, and it has a lot of great silhouette images in it. I decided I wanted a silhouette look, but didn't want to have um, totally black images. So I went with pure graphite, which is a very dark gray. And this, this ink pad is from Altenew. It's a crisp dye ink. And I'm gonna go ahead and stamp part of the mountains here. So you can see the card to the left. I've already done this card and I made some mistakes on it. And I'll point those out in a few minutes, but for that one, I did the mountains all the way across. I just stamped one mountain and I felt like the trees and the mountains at the bottom there really fell flat. It didn't look like a very natural scene. So I decided to do this card again, which I hardly ever do and switch up the orientation of the mountains and the trees. So here you can see I'm creating a little bit of a soft C shape with the trees and I'll put in another set of mountains here and kind of just um, stack these a little bit so that there's a little more dimension and interest to that scene. I'm working on Saunders Waterford High White Cold Press Paper here, and this is cut to, and I think I cut this um, to eight by three. It's either eight by three or eight and a half by three and a half inches. So I'm just wetting the top, which is gonna be the sky, with a one inch flat brush from Wonder Forest, and I'm just wetting the entire background. I'm gonna drop in Daniel Smith Hansa Yellow Light. Um, originally, I was thinking that I would do more of a Northern Lights background, but that wasn't really working out for me. It started to look more like a galaxy, um, night sky kind of situation, so I just went with that. And as I said, I did this card more than once. So I dropped in some Quinacridone Rose, and then here I have Indian Throne Blue. My paper was starting to dry, so I'm adding more water. I would not add any additional water after this point because it's just going to cause those cauliflower um, kind of bleached out areas on your panel because now the whole thing is covered with pigment. But you need to have a good and wet piece of paper in order for your watercolors to kind of run and move and to get the colors to mix together with soft edges. So you can see that I'm covering up some of the yellow that I had there. I lost a little bit of it, so I'll just pick up some Hansa Yellow Light and put that back in, a little bit of the Quinacridone Rose, and here I'm dropping in the Indigo. So that's a much darker blue, and I'm holding the card up at an angle so that I get some additional movement to the watercolor. I'm taking the pigment directly from the pans to make sure that it's good and saturated because I want this to be a vibrant sky and for it to not dry back too much. To add the watercolor look to my dye stamped images here, I'm just using a wet paintbrush. This looks like a number four round brush and I'm just wetting the ink. That's gonna help blend the ink out a little bit. Now, this watercolor paper is cold pressed and it's textured, so I moved to a six round brush, so a little bit larger. The reason I did that is I wanted more water. I wanted to be able to hold more water on the brush so that I could move through this process a little quicker. So I'm just using some of the paint, or sorry, the ink from the stamped images, and I'm pulling that out into the snow to add just a little bit of texture to the snow. Um, because I stamped this on cold pressed paper, which is pretty textured, it didn't stamp all the way, but I knew that I was going to cover it with this water so things would blend in nicely. Here I have the Altenew Pure White Ink Spray and I'm just splattering that on. So before I splatter with an ink spray like this, I do tap it off a couple times in the trash can to make sure that I don't get big blobs like I had in the first card. I forgot to do that and look at these three huge blobs here. Um, I didn't like that how this card turned out over here on the right, but I do like the sky better. Aside from those three blobs, I like the sky better on the right. It dried back quite a bit, but it's still vibrant. But I felt like there was more movement to the paint in that sky than in this sky. So here I've let the panel dry and I'm adding a little more splatter because if you add the splatter while your paint is wet, you'll get kind of those fuzzy edges to your snow. 
Whereas if you add it when it's dry, then you're gonna get this distinct edges. So that adds the illusion of depth in the snowfall. Um, here, I feel like I over splattered it. I mean, this is like a blizzard going on here. Now, after this dried, I decided to add, what did I add? I added one of the, I added splatters from one of the tonic sh shimmer pins and that caused my sentiment to bleed a little bit. Here I'm stamping the moon from the Shoot the Moon stamp set with Wow Clear Embossing Ink, and I'm gonna sprinkle on metallic platinum sparkle embossing powder. So I wanted to have a little bit of sparkle in the moon just to add a little more um, interest to the card. And I'm gonna go ahead and heat that from the back. Anytime you use a glitter embossing powder, you want to heat your embossing powder from the back. If you start heating it from the front before things have started to melt, you'll blow your glitter away and you'll have kind of an Apache appearance. So heat your card from behind, start to melt the embossing powder, and then you can finish the embossing from the front once the glitter has embedded into that melting embossing powder. Here's the coordinating die set, and this set does come as a bundle, so the dies come along with the stamps. And you have this embossing plate here. There are actually two moon embossing plates. That half moon up at the top with the outline die is also embossing plate, that one there. So you can use those to add additional texture to your card. You also have outlines of mountains, and I think the tree die down below is absolutely lovely, and a couple different star clusters. Here's a close-up of the finished card so you can see all the colors and the texture. I love the texture of the mountains and the trees and that little bit of texture that was added to the snow from picking up the ink from the stamped images. You can also see some of the glittery splatter and how that made my sentiment bleed out just a little bit. If you felt like you learned something today, please like and subscribe down below. This is a pretty bold winter scene here. Um, so if that's not your cup of tea, you might try some lighter colors or maybe using a little less of the paint to get a lighter look like what I achieved in the first card. Thanks so much for joining me today and I'll see you soon with more inspiration. Mm -hmm.